I don't feel it. The, before the break, we, we saw that we, we have to develop protocols. And a protocol is something that has to be written very carefully to avoid ambiguity. So now, who writes protocols? And the problem is that in networking, you don't have only one entity that writes protocols, but you have a lot of organization bodies that can uh, write protocols, and the market will decide which kind of protocol uh, will be used. <clears throat> so uh, why we need standard? First, because when you arrive at Telecom Bretagne with your computer from your own country, you plug it on the network, and normally it works. I don't know if it was the case. Maybe you had some trouble with the uh, Maisel network to, to get access, but that's uh, another thing. You have normally the same Ethernet card, you have the same Wi Fi interface. So you, you have things that help you to communicate, and you don't have to ask you a question what kind of a wired network. I will find at Telecom Bretagne, or what kind of wireless technology I will have at Telecom Bretagne. Normally, we you find the same technology everywhere, so it simplifies your uh, your view. So that's uh, something that is important because it allows computer uh, network element from different company or application that to work together. And that's very important. In especially in terms of networking, because you are talking with equipment you don't know. When I'm going on a Google server, I don't know what is the brand of the server, what kind of uh, operating system uh, you have. You just know that you have to respect some kind of interaction. So a standard will uh, help you to be sure that everything works fine. The second thing is that, for example, if you believe you, you are in a company and you say, okay, the standard is good, but I know another company that is doing a better product than the standard. So will you buy it? No? Why? Because you won't work with the rest of the... Yes, but maybe it's just for your own uh, needs. You don't have to carry about you are doing, for example, your local area network, and it's instead of Wi-Fi, you have another technology which is much, much better than Wi-Fi. So will you take it on your company network? For a future experiment. Yes. You take a risk. Because if that company disappears, then you have no other alternative for this product. If you have a standard, you're sure that uh, if this company disappears, you can find another company that will provide you equivalent equipment. So that's a uh, thing. The other thing is that if you have different companies that offer the same technology, then you can maybe reduce the cost because you don't, uh, you are not uh, linked with one company. You can change, and of course, when you make a, ask for some equipment devices then you can see what is the cheapest one. If you are uh, linked to a technology, of course, the company can make the price uh, it wants. So this is one point. Another good point of standard is that you have mass production. And if you have mass production, usually the price goes down. So for example, in uh, we talk about uh, OSI uh, network or a model, but you had networks that were based on OSI, for example, uh, airport or were communicating using OSI protocol, and it was very expensive to find this kind of equipment. If you go to IP, you find IP everywhere, so it's cheaper. And since a lot of people are using IP, you are most sure that you don't have bugs in IP. Because a lot of people, are, if they have bugs, some people before you found uh, this work. So that's something that is important also because you have this kind of mass production. So, of course, you have, as I say, connectivity. And when you are a company, but it's very interesting to put 
your technology into a standard because all your competitors, you will have to pay for your patents. So you, that's why you, you would like to, to have standards. The problem is that we have no standardization of standardization body. And uh, you have a lot of entities, a lot of uh, bodies that do standardization. For example, normally, it's UN, United Nations, with uh, OSI, that is all, sorry, that do the standardization for everything. So in France, you have AFNOR. In uh, the US, you have NC that do standardization for a company. The problem is with networking is that now it's more and more difficult to have a specific technology in a country. So a long time ago, you had, for example, ISDN in France was totally different from the ISDN in Germany. So if you buy a French uh, ISDN telephone and you put it in the German telephone, it didn't work. But it was specification from France on some subpart of the standards that was used in France, and other part, other sub part of the standard that were used in Germany. Now we have a mass market, and everything is worldwide. So national standardization uh, organizations are not so good. Now, for example, you have European organization like HC that works well and develops some things like GSM, DCT, and you have also vendors that try to promote their products. So you have two strategies. One, which is IEEE, that say, uh, I will go to this IEEE standardization body to put my technology in the product and earn money from patents. So this is one view. And the, for the ITF, so the organization that standardizes IP, is not so clear. Of course, you have patents, but the goal is not to, the official goal is not to, to sell patents, but in fact, it's to say that if I increase interconnection, then the cake will be bigger because everybody can share information, and if everybody share information, then we will share more information. So if the cake is bigger, my part of the cake will be bigger. So we try to do something that works well without patent, but after that I can sell my product, or more product from that. If I do uh, IP telephony system that is not standard, I will not talk with a lot of body. If I follow the standard, then I can sell more product, even if my competitor are selling more product. So that's more the philosophy of ITF. And you have also manufacturers that create uh, forums and they try to promote their technology. So, in telecommunications, so you have uh, you have some uh, UN organization. One is called ITU, for so International Telecommunication Union, and it's a very very old organization. For example, they standardized this in a document called uh, E. Uh, 1677, <coughs> my memory is good. And you know what that? Morse code. It's written in Morse code, but it's Morse code. So we developed this for telecommunication. But it was a long, long time ago. Then we developed also all the standards for what we call right now the plain old telephony system. So normally we have a plain old telephony system system here, and it's a very old one, so you have this kind of thing, so all pieces in it are developed by ITU, and of course it was a specific network, and more and more we don't have a specific network for telephony, but we are going more and more to IP, so the ITU is also a going to IP and work on solutions, for example, for voice over IP, or codec for voice, codec for video, etc., etc. So you will have to read some of the publication during your, uh, your stay here, because it's a very important organization. You have also IEEE, 
So IEEE is well known for scientific uh, publication, but is very active also in networking. And most of the local area network protocol we'll see, like Ethernet or Wi-Fi, come from IEEE. So when I will start, uh, start speaking French uh, during this class, so when the Master of Science uh, will live, we will see uh, IEEE 802.3 and uh, also how, how it works and how this is organized. We, you have also ISO, as I said, but ISO is uh, International Standard Organization, is not publicly creating standards, but tech standards coming from ITU, IEEE. And for example, the reference model is also defined at ITU. But this why you have the stamp of UN, UN nation, and this is, must be adapted, every, uh, adapted everywhere. So this is a legal, I prefer it's not legal, but ISO ITU is a legal uh, view. And you have some uh, strange things, some ugly things that appears. Is for example, internet. Internet standardization was absolutely not driven by ITU, uh, ITU or uh, ISO. It was something that has been developed by some uh, US uh, um, universities, and it's a network that starts from nowhere. And that's a problem if you look at uh, UN organizations, because all the management of the network, if you want an address on the network, if you want something, you don't have to ask to these bodies, but you have to ask some to something that depends from the US government. So for some people, it's, uh, it's a problem. But of course, IP is something universal now, and you cannot uh, uh, avoid uh, IP technology. Another organization, uh, organization that is important for us is HC, European Standard, uh, European Telecommunication Standard Institute, that create, as I said, GSM and DCT. And now is uh, close also to Asian standardization uh, for 3G. And so they cannot keep the same logo, at C because E is European. So they create the 3GPP and they work on 3G on new technology like LT. So you will have to have a look uh, on this. So if you look at uh, a standard developed by uh, IEEE, uh, ITU, how you can recognize it? You have a letter, and the letter gives you uh, some uh, view on what is inside. So for example, if it starts with uh, X is data network, if it starts with a Q is switching and signaling, if you have an H at the beginning, it's uh, for example a codec for video or, or voice. There is no meaning on the letter, but it just defines the group that works and uh, that produces uh, the thing. So for example, so you can access freely to this uh, recommendation. So for example, if I have my mouse, if I go, okay, so you have access so to uh, X25 recommendation. So X25, it's a very old technology. You see that uh, it was published in 19, uh, 1996. And you can uh, have access to, to this document. Either, so maybe here I, let me, okay. You have access to it, for example, I go here. And you can select your language. So for example, you can have it in English, in French, or in Spanish, and some, uh, or some standard in Arabic or Russian also. So you can have access to one of these uh, documents. So usually we you select the English part because we are used to a lot of English vocabulary. And when you read it in French, it's sometimes more, more difficult to understand uh, what, they, what they mean. But you, you, since it's an international organization, 
you have different language for standard. As I say, the problem is that you have to understand the same way implementation. So translation are very well done by ITU, but of course, of, by reading the French, maybe you will not understand exactly the same thing as someone that is reading Spanish. So you may not implement the, the, the protocol the same way if you read the both documentation, because the language are slightly different. So usually when you have this kind of problem, you go back to the English version that is used as reference. So that's why translating the, the standard is not always a good thing. For political reasons, it's good because uh, English is not the dominant language, and everybody is happy because, uh, especially in France, we have a French uh, version of the standard. But since it is to avoid ambiguities, to have only one version <laughs> is, is better. And for example, IETF is publishing uh, RFC in English. Some people translate it in French, and it's stupid, because the translation adds some mistake in the description of the protocol. So if you want really to implement things, you will have to read the English version of the document. So that's uh, something important, and especially uh, not for you, of course, but for the first year and second year of, uh, student in Brest, Sometimes it's very difficult for them to read something in English, but it's mandatory when you are doing networking because your specification will be written in English. So here you can download this document without uh, any fee on uh, ITU web page. So if you want to, if you don't sleep very well due to some uh, jet lag or you can try to, to take one and read it. It's very, very, uh, it works very, very well. <laughs> so this is for ITU. You, so what is important also is, for example, when you see X25, you have to look at the date of the publication. Because you have several versions of X25. And some t when they do a revision, they still call it X25 but look at the date to see what is the latest version of uh, the standard. So you have IEEE that made a lot of things on uh, local area network, and so Ethernet comes from IEEE, Wi-Fi comes from IEEE, uh, so you, you have a lot of technology that comes from these groups. So usually they are known from the group 802. something. So, for example, Ethernet is uh, called 802.3. Wi Fi is 802.11. And same thing, you have periodically you have a new version of the standard. So, you, you have to be careful and read the right version of the standard if you want to find uh, something. So, there is two ways to get a properly. You have one way which is uh, easiest, but you have to pay, or the school has to pay, is to go to IEEE Explorer, and when you go to the IEEE Explorer, you will have access to all scientific publications made by IEEE, but also to the standard. But each time you download the standard, the school has to pay some money to IEEE. Another way to, to get it is to go to that web page, for example, and here you have access for it uh, on it for free. So that's uh, that's better for the school. Uh, so this is a very important document. It's more than 1,000 pages. So here it's uh, for very big uh, jet lag. You can uh, read it. There is also some uh, document now that are not published in the 802 series. But for example, you have a group, uh, 1095.1 or that publish things, for example, in routing for home network. So this is another group, and you can uh, have a look uh, on it if, if you want. So all the network standards are no more in the 802 group, but can be everywhere, somewhere else. If I understood well, the difference is that you can, uh, when companies are participating to standardization, they have to vote to agree on the standard or not, on the rules 
are different in A2 group and the other ones. So for example, A2, A2, 19. Uh, I think it's 19.1, it's about uh, CPL. So how you send uh, information in uh, electrical wire. So it's uh, also something. So, uh, but interesting for network. So here, same thing, you can go on the web page. If you want to have like, full access, go to AEEE Explorer but prefer this link to access to the standard. So you have the information. IETF is simpler. You have a uh, document, the standard, or some standard, are with LFC. LFC means request for comment. But there is no more comment right now because the standard, normally there is no ambiguity on it. So you don't have any comment to do on it. This is perfect. And so, but historically it was name and you have a number and if you want to publish a new version of the standard then you will have a new number so it's different from uh, the other one and if you want to understand how it is uh, done at IETF you have first here you have a web page here that gives you the list of all VRFC that has been published by IETF. So the last one is from August uh, 2011. So if you look here, you have the number. So if you click on the number, you get access to the standard. And here you have the status. And if you see proposed standard, or draft standard, or standard, it's what we call the standard track. It means that it is a standard that you can implement on your system. But some of the documents are, for example, informational. I, I try to, to find some. Uh, because I have no lot. So, for example, here. Uh, it's informational, so it means that if you look at the title, it doesn't look really like uh, the standard name, but it's some information that uh, you can read for some information. Same thing here, best current practice is a document that helps you to understand how to manage your network, how to configure your equipment, but it's not a way to implement things. So all RFCs are not standard. But you have some, when you look at an RFC, you have to look at the status in this page. Let's say, for example, proposed standard, draft standard, or standard. And uh, so you have different versions. For example, if I have some lock here, I'm lucky. Okay. For example, this one, 6315, is, is informational, but has been obsoleted by this uh, RFC. So it means that you have to look on the status of this page to see if the version number of your RFC is correct or if there is a new version that updates the previous one. So that's important to, to read that before uh, uh, before reading really the document because here you know if you have the accurate document or not. So what is very important also from ITF is that you have working document, uh, working group documents that are available. It means that if I go to ITU, if I go to HC, I will just have full, st full standard that have been voted and accepted by the group that work on the standard. But all the draft, all the working documents are private. So I cannot access to them and for a student it's Sometimes it's, uh, it's a problem because you, you want to work on something that doesn't really exist on the market and you want to know what happened. And for IEEE, for uh, um, ITU, it's more difficult. You have to know some people from the group that can give you this information. IETF is totally open and so you can have access to this working draft uh, on the same web page, on the same uh, web site 
So you can see what are the current work done at the IT. So it's more open on that sense. And you have HC also, you can go to the HC website and you, you can have also the community. 